Next is Spencer Bean and the Waterford team. Warm welcome for Spencer Bean. Hello, everybody. Um, so happy to be here. Uh, this is my first Puzzle Parley, and I'm having a blast. Uh, my wife, unfortunately, could not join us, Lizzie. You, you may have seen her in the program. Uh, we have three wonderful dogs at home who needed just a little extra care and attention. So she sends her love to everybody here. Um, like Chris said, I'm Spencer Bean. Uh, my wife and I own the Waterford Puzzle Company, formerly Elms Puzzles. And I think, oh, 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 oh nope. Sorry. Um, while that's getting ready, I have here Lisa Von Hassel, who has been with Elms since 95. So she is a very experienced puzzle cutter. We also have Jamie here with us, who's one of our newer cutters at Waterford. Um, and so here we are with the Waterford Puzzle Company. Um, nope, sorry, I pushed the button again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, well, Elms was a, originally started in 1987 by Betsy Stewart. And by raise of hands, who here knew Betsy? Did anyone know Betsy? Only a few, okay. I, I personally never had the chance to meet her myself. Uh, I wish I had. I had the great pleasure of meeting her husband, Fred, uh, as we were looking to purchase the company. Uh, but Betsy started the company in 1987, and she had uh, grown up with puzzles. She had an uncle who cut back in the 30s and 40s, and so she just grew up kind of doing these hand-cut wooden jigsaw puzzles. And for Fred one year, for Christmas, she got him a saw. And she thought, well, I'll get Fred into puzzle cutting. And day after Christmas, they pulled it all out, and Fred spent about five minutes on the saw and said, nope, not for me. Uh, and so Betsy then took to the saw and slowly and surely uh, kind of trained herself and just figured out what worked for her. Uh, and as the business grew, she needed to bring on more people. And that's where people like Lisa came in. Um, Oops. Uh, the right button is what the, you want to use. The right. One, that one. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other direction. The other direction. You might have it up. It's upside down. It's upside down. I'm so sorry, friends. Thank you. Um, so, there's Betsy. Uh, so this is, I, I actually don't know when this was taken. Do you know when this would have been taken, this picture? Yeah, it would have probably been early 80s, I guess. Early 80s. Uh, so for those who don't know, Elm's puzzles came from Elizabeth Lee McShane Stewart. So the Elm's were her initials. Uh, so that's where Elm's comes from. The tree came after the fact. Uh, as soon as she started commercializing these, she decided, well, we should probably have a signature piece in these. Uh, and so Elm's, Elm Tree just made sense. And so that's, that kind of became Betsy's signature piece. We were actually talking about it, that we think that was her signature piece, was, was yeah. the tree. So if you have an Elm's puzzle, and all it has is the tree, it doesn't have any other signature piece in it from a different cutter, it's probably, chances are really good that that's a, that's a Betsy original that you've got. Um, so Betsy, when, when her husband retired, they lived in Mass, and I think technically she started, oh, Maryland, technically started the company in Maryland, but when Fred retired, they moved to Maine, and they built a beautiful house here, and Fred and Betsy lived upstairs, and the puzzle shop was downstairs. So they specifically designed the house for the puzzle shop. Uh, that's Betsy there on the left in 1997. Uh, and these screenshots come from a really fun uh, segment on Maine Public Radio that aired in 1997, where they interviewed Betsy 10 years into the business. So this is what the website looked like in 1997. Uh, some of you know, the literature here on the left. Uh, and here on the left we have our very own Lisa Von Hassel uh, back in 1997. And for those of you who might know Rose, this is Rose on the right. Um, and next we have, so this is a clip, we don't have the sound, but this is a, a little piece of that segment from 1997. Uh, so as that's playing Lisa, I'd love for you to kind of talk about how you met Betsy and uh, your time at Ellen's. Okay. So I 
entertainment, Betsy, I actually, Rose was getting done. She'd been there for three or four years and she was going on to do something different. And um, I was looking for a part-time job and went over to interview, got the job that day and started to learn. Um, I, the first six months, well I started in October, so it was Christmas season, not a time to really learn to cut, so I was doing a lot of finishing and whatnot. And then um, began cutting and then segued into just learning every part of the business that I could because I just found it fascinating and interesting um, and stayed there with Fred till he retired. So it was just really a lot of fun. A lot of different people have come in. People flew planes in to stop in and visit. People traveled from very far away to come see us. We had, um, we would do a lot of puzzles we did for the Bush family. Um, in fact, we had um, his chief of staff come in with the Secret Service, and I, everybody that would come in, I would teach, get him on my saw and show him how to cut. And he just loved it. He absolutely loved it. The Secret Service is standing there with their hands across their chest, like we're ready to go now. But he was busy. He was just he was enjoying it. So we've had a lot of that. I love showing people how to cut because I think they really get appreciation for how really difficult it is and the talent that it takes. I mean, everybody, they think the saw doesn't, the blade doesn't go all the way through the puzzle. How do you get the, they just don't understand it until they really see it. And it, it makes it a lot of fun to meet the people and do that with them. Um, so in, so this was in 1997. So this is 10 years after she had started the business. In 2007, she passed away. She had ovarian cancer, and I, how long did she, did she live breast after that? Oh, for breast years cancer. And then it okay. Um, and so this is a little clip uh, that came out in the, the very next catalog that Betsy actually helped to plan. Uh, our fearless leader, Betsy Stewart, Queen Bee, passed away August 31st after a long and very courageous battle against cancer. Right up until her passing, she worked on all aspects of Elms, including the planning of the very catalog that this came out in. Um, and what I, specifically what I love is her strength, courage, and humor gave us all pause to appreciate time spent with family, friends, and our beloved pets. And Dogs in the Office has been a staple at Elms since day one, continues to be a staple. Uh, how many dogs are in the office on a daily basis now? I guess only two. Now it's not just the uh, two, but there was upwards of seven or eight, depending on <laughs> So if anyone has an Elms puzzle and you have a little bit of dog hair in there, it's probably, it's part of the course for us. Um, so she passed away in 2007, uh, and so the Elms team at the time kept going, and Fred had run his own company before and thought, well, here's a company that I can keep going. And obviously, because it was in his basement, it was hard to kick them out, uh, and so he just let them keep coming in. Uh, and so we've got Lisa here on the left, uh, Debbie, Rose, Cindy, Chris, Fred, Gabrielle, Kristen, and Libby. Uh, this isn't everyone who has worked for Elms in the past. Uh, I know that Penny is one who, who worked there at one point. Um, but here's just kind of a smattering. When we purchased the company back in 2018, Lisa, Debbie, Rose, Chris and Kristen were all still there. And actually, to this day, the only one of those who's not there is Debbie. Unfortunately, she passed back in 2019. Uh, but this was, this was the Elms team keeping Betsy's vision alive and going. Uh, and so in 2016, well actually, let me back up. The entire reason that I, kid from Utah, happened into the puzzle business is because my wife's aunt, Debbie, uh, she cut puzzles, when did she come on? 2000? Probably by the time she passed, she'd been there I think like 17 years. Okay, so probably early 2000s, Debbie started cutting puzzles. Um, and so like yeah. Betsy, my wife Lizzie grew up doing hand cut jigsaw puzzles and she would come to Maine every year and in the town of Waterford, where Debbie lived and where my wife's parents had a little cabin, uh, she would sit on the porch and she would do hand cut puzzles and Debbie cut her a beautiful puzzle for her high school graduation that's got her name in it. And I remember when we got married, I saw this puzzle and thought, this is next level. I, I had never seen anything like that. Uh, and so in 2016, Debbie reached out and said, hey, um, we're not, we need some marketing help. 
And Lizzie and I at the time were running a small little cross-stitch company making embroidery patterns. And so we had a little bit of experience with kind of custom handmade goods. And we thought, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll see if we can help. Um, so we started kind of on a consulting basis to see if we could get some online advertising, some email marketing, just some of the basics in place. Uh, and then in 2017, it, it became clear that Fred was looking for an exit path. Uh, he, at the age of 91, I think at the time, had a brand new girlfriend uh, and just wanted to start his life with her. Uh, she's a lovely woman. And he wasn't sure how to exit without shutting it all down and putting all of the wonderful cutters out of work. Uh, so at that point, Lizzie and I started talking to Fred seriously about what it might look like to purchase the company. And then in 2018 is when we officially purchased the company. We moved out of Fred's basement so that he could sell the house. And he, I guess they have a place still in the area, but he about spends a mile away. about a mile away. She had a house, so so he's, he's still in town. Uh, he spent the last winter in Florida. He's doing well. Uh, still a very active guy, still puzzling a lot. Um, so we moved in 2018 to become the Waterford Puzzle Company. Now, I, I know a lot of you are probably wondering why ditch the Elms name, and honestly, in hindsight, we probably should have kept it. Um, but the Waterford Puzzle Company, for a few different legal reasons, we wanted to make a, a relatively clean break. So we actually started, rather than purchasing the LLC, we started a new LLC, uh, we re-employed everybody, uh, we bought some equipment from Fred, and kind of transitioned that way. Uh, but we called it the Waterford Puzzle Company after the town Waterford, where Debbie lived, where Lizzie spent her summers puzzling. Um, and we tried to keep things as much in the family as we could. So the shop is actually currently located in Debbie's son's building in Bridgeton, Maine. He runs an excavation business, and he just had a half of his office building that he hadn't finished yet. He was waiting to, to build it up for some business, and Debbie said, my son has a, has a perfectly great office space. If, if you're willing to work with him to flesh it out and put some walls in there, I'll bet that could work. And that's where we are to this day in Bridgeton. Um, so that was 2018. In 2019, like I said, Debbie passed away. Uh, when Fred, when we made the transition from Elms to Waterford, Fred sold all of his rental club inventory. So for those of you who might be aware, uh, Elms had a really extensive catalog of rental puzzles. Uh, and to help Fred with uh, just the finances of everything, we said, you know what, Fred, just sell all of those puzzles, have one last used puzzle sale, uh, and we'll just start fresh. So if you've been wondering where the rental club is, we are now, just now, relaunching, now that we've built up enough inventory to have a, a decent-sized club. In 2020, obviously, COVID hit. Uh, Cutter started working from home. Um, you have a saw at home? No, you don't have a saw You do. do have a saw at home. I do now. So we have eight cutters total, I think six of whom are working from home or remotely yeah. in some capacity. Uh, and Barnes & Noble reached out and said, hey, we want to capitalize on the puzzle trend. How would you like to be in Barnes & Noble stores? And we said, sure, interesting. Uh, and so we did 350 puzzles. And it turns out that it is hard to scale a hand-cut wooden jigsaw puzzle <laughs> operation. And so we scrambled and we actually contacted the wonderful folks here at the Parley and said, do you have any, but we just need more capacity. And they pointed us to Shay. And so that's when Shay came on as our first truly remote cutter. We would mount things in Maine, we would send it off to Shay in South Dakota, she would cut it up, she would box it, send it back. Uh, and that's uh, how we got through that Barnes & Noble order. And then in 2021, we decided, no thanks again. Uh, just too much, it wasn't what we wanted to do. Uh, we've tried wholesale a few times since then, and it just, it's never really worked. Um, and as you heard from a lot of the people last night doing the puzzle exchange, doing the same puzzle over and over and over and over is tedious. And we were asking the cutters to cut 50 of the same image over and over and over and over. And so, luckily, no one, there was no mutiny, but it was probably very, very close. Very. Uh, <laughs> now the truth comes out. Uh, and so we decided that we're not about, we don't want to do the bulk, we don't want to do the mass, we want to focus on hand-cut jigsaw puzzles. Uh, and so we're kind of, after the, the roller coaster that was COVID, we're finding our footing again with exactly what Elms has always been, the rental club, 
custom hand-cut jigsaw puzzles. Uh, one other way that we wanted to keep things kind of in the family, uh, this is our cutter Chris, and when we wanted to come up with a new marketing video for the company, we thought, well, we could hire someone locally in Maine, there's a lot of, you know, we could farm that out to anybody. And what we decided to do was to hire Debbie's other son, Joe, who grew up in Maine, grew up in Waterford, and now lives in Boston, or lives in Nashville, actually. Uh, and he does videography, and so we thought, Joe, why don't you come up? And what's actually really fun about this is that Chris is known in town as Miss Chris. She had a school, and most of the kids in that area at some point went through Miss Chris's school, including Joe. Uh, and so here is Joe with his childhood teacher <laughs> and recording a video for us for the company that his mom loved and worked for for so long. Um, so I'll play that video, it's a short one. It doesn't really need sound or anything. So while that's playing, Jamie, I'd love for you to talk about, as, as Jamie kind of represents the new, the new guard, the new generation of cutters yeah. at Waterford, uh, I'd love to hear kind of your experience as someone who came on from a hardware department store and started as a puzzle finisher and now is a brilliant, brilliant cutter. Well, thank you. Um, and it's not just true value. I did 15 years in retail before I switched to Waterford Puzzles, which is crazy. Um, I actually got the job thanks to Debbie's son's now wife. <laughs> She's the one that actually told me about it. And it took about a month due to COVID to get the job due to interviews and Zoom map meets and calls. It was crazy. But I started out as a finisher and it was difficult at first to go from seeing people 24-7 to seeing only a few faces a day. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun, and thank God Lisa was there, because she's the one that got me through it. Um, but I got into cutting about a year after I started, and I have had so much fun with it. It's great just cutting the pieces, even if it's not our whimsies that we usually do. Just cutting the puzzle is fun. I've always had so much fun working with my hands, and this has just been an absolute blast getting to do this and creating all kinds of just new stuff for everyone to enjoy. Is, it's very fulfilling, and it's a very much a dream to have had this kind of opportunity, for sure. Um, designing the puzzles is probably the best part doing orders, coming up with new whimsies for all of the people that have been with us and have seen the whimsies. That's always fun. Um, other than that, Spence. Sure. <laughs> uh, so where are we going from here? So this is a, a small sampling of our team uh, at the shop there in Bridgeton. Um, like I said, we, we kind of want to refocus on what we've always been doing. We want to, first of all, we care very much about our employees, obviously, and want to make sure that in a, I don't know if anyone knows much about Starbucks and Howard Schultz, but uh, he always had the philosophy that if you, treat your, if you treat your employees well, that will translate to the customers. Uh, and we kind of adopt the same philosophy that if our employees are happy and are not cutting the same image 50 times over and over again, uh, and are able to do creative things with their borders and their whimsy pieces and things like that, 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 that will inspire the creativity that will obviously and naturally trickle out to all of the customers who are enjoying these puzzles. So we want to focus first and foremost on that. We recently launched a new website. We're going to be focusing on the Rental Club and an online experience for the Rental Club. Uh, and we've started introducing, we're not quite sure what we're calling it yet, but Masterpiece Puzzles, uh, where we'll just kind of give one of the cutters a puzzle and say, do whatever you want, get as creative as you want, anything that you wanted to try, just go for it. Uh, and then we'll just, it, it's a one time only, and then we'll sell that off. And we recently did that with a, or with a uh, puzzle that Rose cut, and 
gosh, that thing went live and I think it sold within about 30 minutes because uh, it had been talked up online and it was a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Uh, and we also want to do more kind of pre-cuts. So historically, Elms has been focused on uh, custom. So you would, you know, order a puzzle, you'd wait three to four weeks to get it. Um, we want to have a few more puzzles that are available to purchase immediately. And so what we do with our cutter's choice is let the cutters choose the whimsy pieces that get thrown in, usually they just relate to the, the image, the artwork. And we want to focus on just steady and deliberate growth. Uh, not interested in massive wholesale orders. We've gone down that road and it's a totally viable option, just probably not for us. Uh, and then finally, I feel very strongly knowing not being a puzzle cutter myself, not being a, a, a wood worker myself, I have such incredible respect for all of you who do. For all of you who cut the puzzles, who express your creativity and your artistry in that way, it is an absolute talent. And we want to do what we can in Waterford to help perpetuate the talent and the crafting of puzzling. And so uh, we hope to maybe do some puzzle cutting workshops online or some other things just to, to broaden as much as we can uh, this beautiful craft that we have. Uh, so with that, that is us at now the Waterford Puzzle Company, formerly Elms Puzzles. Um, I know that we're over. Uh, should, any, would you want any time for questions or anything? Are there any questions? Any, any questions? <laughs> Feel free to grab any of us from the Waterford team. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Mr. All right, we're roughly at 2.22. Uh, we're supposed to have a 15-minute break, so why don't we reconvene here at 2.40, or you can just hang out, and then we'll be doing the exciting Cutters Roundtable with a smorgasbord of the best cutters out there. And uh, we'll see you in about 18 minutes. I have always loved puzzles. I had an uncle who, in the 30s and 40s, made puzzles as a hobby. Mm. So as a child, I was always getting these wonderful puzzles with my name in them, or Mickey Mouse, or you know, things that appeal to a child. Mm -hmm. And I just grew up with these puzzles. When I first met my husband, he liked to do puzzles, and he had a puzzle going on the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And we fi quickly found out that we had that in common. Um, one Christmas, I decided that it would be fun to try to make our own. So for Christmas, I gave him a saw and some wood and some pictures. Um, and the day after Christmas, we went downstairs and set it all up and mounted the picture onto the wood. And Fred tried it and said, <clears throat> I don't think I can do this. <laughs> he was afraid he'd cut off his thumb or something. Um, I tried it and absolutely fell in love with it. So for months and months, I, after work, I'd come home and I'd just work on it. What were you doing before you started making puzzles? I was uh, in a very high pressure job uh, selling computer software and I said enough of this. Yeah. And I felt that I had gotten to a point where I was good enough and started advertising in the New Yorker and Gourmet and Smithsonian magazines mm -hmm. and the business got started and that was 10 years ago.